here who are not familiar with our tradition of personal anonymity at the public level. Our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. We need always maintain anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. Thus, 58, and Dan S. is the timer for this panel from Area 03, Rose and Dan. And Rose is going to read the following. Hi, everybody. I'm Rose, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm from Area 58, and I'm... Woo! <laughs> Dis and I'm the DCM for District 4. And this is my first PRASA. <laughs> okay. The reading is from the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, page 129. The unity of Alcoholics Anonymous is the most cherished quality our society has. Our lives, the lives of all to come, depend upon it. We stay whole or AA dies. Without unity, the heart of AA would cease to beat. Our world arteries would no longer carry the life-giving grace of God. His gift to us would be spent aimlessly. Back again in their caves, alcoholics would reproach us and say, what a great thing this AA might have been. Okay, so our first speaker is Carrie B., Area 58, Should We Buy Archives? Hi, my name is Carrie, and I'm an alcoholic. My home group is the Three Legacies Group in Bend, Oregon, and my sobriety date is March 25th, 2010, and I love Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, I'm truly blessed to be here with you guys at the PRASA 2018 um, regional Assembly. Uh, when I received the email asking me to participate, I was thrilled when I saw the name of the panel, Moving Forward in Unity. What an amazing thing to be part of. Then I saw my topic. <laughs> uh, should we buy archives? If that's not a controversial topic, I don't know what is. Um, but I suppose that's kind of my thing controversial topics in AA. So um, I, I will thank the committee for throwing me under the, I mean, uh, asking me to participate. Um, so should we buy archives? Well, let's see, who's we? We as members, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, I've purchased ar archives myself as I have a deep love and true appreciation for our history, as I'm sure many of you do as well. But I believe the question being presented today is, should our general service office be purchasing archives? Um, I'm also going to go on, on a limb here and say that this topic is brought to us by last year's attempt at, to acquire the original big book manuscript for GSO archives, spending lots of our money in the process. As much as I would love to keep the answer super simple and just give my opinion, I've been taught that I don't get to share my opinion in Alcoholics Anonymous. I get to share only my experience or stick to the literature. Um, my service sponsor has taught me that even when I have a strong opinion about something, especially when I have a strong opinion about something, I need to resist the urge to put ego first. I am to look it up in the literature and go with whatever that says, even when I disagree. And I would have to have some ego to think that Carrie's opinion holds more weight than the combined conscience of the entire fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous expressed through our literature. Anonymity expressed through true humility is the spiritual foundation of all of our traditions, reminding me to place AA's 36 spiritual principles before my own personal opinions. Um, so I got to bust out the old service manual and do some research uh, in the service structure archives as well as comes of age. I'm, I also have to give some credit to the hard work our GSR for my home group did. When the manuscript first went into litigation last year, she encouraged everyone to do some studying on the traditions as well as the concepts and to bring the results of their research to the next couple of business meetings. From this process emerged a clear sense of the group's collective view. An informed group conscience was made for our group to temporarily suspend GSO contributions. This is the first time in the group's known history we have not contributed. Our group felt as though we had to, the responsibility to implement the power of the purse set forth in Concept 7. That day at the business meeting, I voted for something I never thought I would vote in favor of. 
It was heartbreaking for everyone. Our group was not one that suffers from apathy. However, the group was unified in the decision, God was present, and in a program of action, we had the courage to take action. I will share with you a gist of the letter that accompanied the suspension of our group contributions based on the group conscience that GSO should not be spending money on archives or legal fees to acquire archives. We've entered into public controversy, and as stated on page 72 of the service manual, it was recognized, this is a quote, that a public lawsuit is a public controversy, something in which our tradition says we may not engage. By not informing the groups or even the delegates so that we could have a say on the matter as to how we, the body of AA, would want to proceed, the triangle, which is the very structure of AA we feel, has flipped. Our trustees are given the right of decision except in matters which could adversely affect AA as a whole. And lastly, as it relates here, our seventh tradition, money we send to GSO, is expected to be used to carry the message to the still suffering alcoholic. Using our seventh tradition on anything but our primary purpose is not what we send contributions for. That was my home group experience. I can also share with you a piece of personal experience. Just a few short weeks after the manuscript went into litigation, I was granted the opportunity to visit Stepping Stones in New York, Bill and Lois's house. I was on the tour when the tour guide started talking about how at one point toward the end of Bill's life, in the midst of his dementia, he wanted to leave the house to us, to the fellowship. The tour guide went on to tell the story on how, about how the trustees were able to do their job and uphold the traditions, even though it was Bill at that time writing in a letter back to Bill that because of the traditions and the fact that we don't own property or get tangled up in money over property, of course they had to decline the generous offer of Bill's proposal. We could tell that our tour guide had no clue of what was currently taking place at GSO in trying to acquire the manuscript at this time. That's not why he was telling that story. He was telling the story because it was a beautiful example of principles before personalities and how our traditions work. Bill and Lois's beautifully preserved property was amazing. It was by far the most special AA archive I'll ever see. But it didn't get me any more sober. And I'm not sure how any archive would help to get the new person sober. I'm grateful for pieces of history that have been preserved and made available for me to experience. Absolutely. But I'm also grateful for the way the service structure is set up, for our concepts, and for our 12 traditions which not only help to keep us out of controversy, but help to keep us focused on our primary purpose, that of helping the alcoholic who still suffers. As a parent of purebred offspring, these traditions are especially important to me because they are the one thing that we have to ensure AA's future for my great-grandchildren and, God willing, shall sustain us in unity for as long as he may need us. Thank you. Okay, and our second presenter is Thomas S. from 05, Board Censure, why is it and why would we do, what is it and why would we do it? My name is Thomas and I'm an alcoholic. I am very grateful to be here with this opportunity to share Uh, my sobriety date is uh, July 18, 1987. I have a sponsor whose sobriety date is October 31st, 1958. And I have a service sponsor whose sobriety date is August of 1970. Oh. Board censure. What is it and why would we do it? AA must continue to live, or most of us will surely die. First tradition, long form, second sentence. This is the charge and warning given to us by our co-founder, Bill W., all in the same sentence. The final responsibility and ultimate authority for AA World Services resides in the collective conscience of our whole fellowship. The conference, for nearly every practical purpose, 
has become the active voice and effective conscience of our whole society in its world affairs. The fellowship accomplishes this through the General Service Conference with representatives from every element of our movement, the groups, the General Service Board, and our two operating corporations, AA World Services, Inc., and Grapevine, Inc. The General Service Board and its two operating corporations and board committees are responsible for our day-to-day -day activities and business. The board is expected to confer with the conference on matters of significant importance. The conference charter in item 10 states except in great emergency, neither the General Service Board nor its related services ought ever take any action liable to greatly affect AA as a whole without first consulting the conference. The Board does at all times reserve the right to decide which of its actions or decisions may require the approval of the conference. The conference has the final responsibility and ultimate authority representing our whole fellowship. Further, the conference has the power of the purse. This is an important constraint on all board activity and commitments. Knowledge of this constraint is generally known throughout our fellowship. What isn't generally known is the ability of the conference to censor the board. This is referred to in Warranty 5 of Concept 12. Webster defines censor as one strong or vehement expression of disapproval, two, an official reprimand as by a legislative body or one of its members, and three, to criticize or reproach in harsh manner. Should the General Service Board or any of its related services enter into public controversy, even in self-defense, the conference may consider it prudent to censure. Certainly, censure would be less dramatic than withholding the purse. However, no conference action ever should be personally punitive or an incitement to public controversy. Because of the relationship the board and its related services has to the conference, it should also follow this guideline as well. Nothing could be more damaging to our unity and to worldwide goodwill, which AA enjoys, than public contention, no matter how promising the immediate dividends might appear. Having defined what censure is and why in great emergency causing public controversy and or punitive actions taken, we would censure in remembrance of the charge and warning stated in Tradition 1, I urge each of us to always remember AA must continue to live or most of us will surely die. Thank you. Okay, Hero S09, reorganizing the board. Is it time? Good evening, everybody. My name is Hero, and I am an alcoholic. I am honored to serve as uh, Panel 68 Chair for Mid Southern California Area 09. And uh, Dan, if you just hold on just a moment, I got two, two, two uh, thank yous and one apology. Uh, 
I'd like, to, I'd like to really thank Area 42 for kicking Prasa up a notch and, uh, and, and really holding the bar, not that bar, but holding the bar high for us next year in Irvine. Um, and, and I also want to thank the, uh, the, the interpreters and also offer an apology. Uh, lo siento por hablar tan rápido, porque I'm, 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 I'm going to try and like, cram a 15-minute talk into seven minutes, so uh, I'm sorry about that. And also I had to make some changes to this as well, so I'll try to point that out. So uh, here we go. So before we get into the nitty-gritty here on the ground floor of this topic, let's zoom out to an airplane view. These three talks are part of this panel called Moving Forward in Unity, which is, a line, which is in line with this year's conference theme, AA, a solution for all generations. And if you marvel about that theme for just a minute, you might begin to be struck by a sense of awe and wonder. Because one way of interpreting this theme is AA for this generation and the next generation and the one after that and the one after that and so on and so on and so on, ad infinitum, amen. And that's some serious science fiction stuff. I mean, it's not just Star Wars The Next Generation. It's AA for all the future generations to come. Thanks to the previous two presentations, uh, you, you've now had a 14-minute introduction to this topic. Is it time to reorganize the board? And uh, I, I'm certainly not an expert on this. Uh, and uh, so here's, here's what I've learned from the background materials for the 2018 service conferences, Committee on Trustees, Agenda Item F, uh, to review a proposal to organize the AAWS and general service boards. This motion was forwarded to the conference by Alabama Northwest Florida Area 01, and the substance, substance of the motion is that the board of AAWS entered into the manuscript litigation for no stated spiritual purpose, and that this has had five major repercussions. One, the litigation, quote, violates a tent tradition by exposing the entire fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous to public controversy. Two, it has opened the delegate members of the General Service Conference a violation of the 11th tradition by subjecting them to subpoena, breaking their anonymity at the public level. Uh, Three, and no, I cannot, I'm sorry. Uh, the litigation has, quote, created financial li liability to the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, the General Service Board of Alcoholics Anonymous, the AA World Services, Inc., for no stated AA purpose, unquote. And four, the litigation has, quote, been undertaken without the full knowledge of the General Service Board of Alcoholics Anonymous or the General Service Conference and with apparent deliberation in avoiding, unquote, our full knowledge. And five, because of all this, the motion posits that the litigation has severely crippled the confidence and full faith of the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous in the sound leadership of these various boards. So is it time to reorganize the board? I, I don't know. But any answer to this question must rely upon one's experience of the last lines of the motion, that is, whether the litigation itself and the board's subsequent actions, as well as their failures to act, have, quote, severely crippled our faith in their leadership. The background materials of the trustee committee's agenda item E, reviewing a proposal to censure the board, notes that back in 1995, there was a similar agenda item, also about a lawsuit entered into without consulting the fellowship. The 1995 General Service Conference approved the trustees committee's recommendation to dismiss the censure, resulting in the following advisory action. This is a long quote. quote after a thorough examination of the issues and information available, and acknowledging that there may have been problems with communication at many service levels in the past, it was a sense of the committee that there has been improvement. And therefore, in the interest of maintaining AA unity and finding that there was not sufficient cause, the committee unanimously recommended that the proposal to censor the General Service Board be dismissed. So one stance, whether regarding board censure or board reorganization, now must depend on whether there actually has been strong improvement in problems of communication, quote unquote. And personally, on this point, I, I find myself somewhat disturbed. And the more I learn about the manuscript litigation, the more disturbed I become. While I am relieved that the litigation is over and we are reimbursing the manuscript purchasers' costs and troubles, as announced in General Manager Greg T's February 20th letter to the conference, I find it disheartening that so little appears in the background materials. Missing are letters to the current board from f former board members and past GSO general managers. Missing is the entire history of AAWS's relationship to the manuscript. So 
Is it time to reorganize the board? Well, I still don't know. I guess that depends on how disturbed you are, and it's, dis it's difficult for you to be disturbed if you do have not seen the documentary history of the litigation. And if you have not seen the documentary history of the litigation, please talk to your DCMs and your delegate. And the more informed your home group, your district, or your area, the greater the likelihood of a truly open and honest consideration of this agenda item. Do I believe it's time to reorganize the board? Personally, I still do not know but I'm deeply disquieted. Yet I'm also willing to be open-minded and participate in discussion and listen to our collective group conscience. But I just hope it may be an informed group conscience and, our, and in my experience, our background materials uh, and our general manager's recent announcement fail to provide adequate information to make an informed group conscience. And this is rather chilling. I, I, I do want to add, and. Uh, uh, Permítame, this is uh, this uh, SS Nuevo. Uh, thank you to David Kay and Joel for your discussion today. Um, I, for one, am really grateful that, uh, that we may have a, a fuller report before the conference. It's, it's important for me to say that I, I do have a profound and powerful sense of how incredibly cool it is that we even get to ask this question. How unbelievably cool it is that we were able to call into light these disturbing aspects of current AA governance. The lack of communication by the General Service Board has perforce created fellowships of service geeks, sharing documentation, sharing history, and sharing our experience, strength, and hope with each other. And really, the three topics in this PROSA panel are basically asking the same question that Wilson was answering as he forged this service structure in our concepts. How is it that we are to practice the very essence of democracy in action and spirit? Because, as my dear friend and, and, uh, and, and, and past delegate, Gerald T., likes to remind me, as the last lines of the concepts proclaim, Freedom under God to grow in his likeness and image will ever be the quest of the Alcoholics Anonymous. May our general service conference be always seen as a symbol of this cherished liberty. To a man, we of AA believe that our freedom to serve is truly the freedom by which we live, the freedom in which we have our being.